All right, we got a great matchup this weekend. It's the Lions, it's the Texans. There you see Jared Goff. Well, I'm telling you what, playing at MVP level, C.J. Stroud. Texans looking to rebound after losing to the Jets. The Lions have won six straight games. No Nico Collins so far. He hasn't been taken off of IR yet with that hamstring injury. So, Danny, are you surprised the Lions are only favored by three and a half points in this matchup? A little bit. Uh, I think that if Nico Collins... It would make a little bit more sense if that number was that small with Nico Collins playing. So, you know, I looked into it a little bit more. I think – I don't think Houston has a great home field advantage, right? So, I don't think that's a huge factor in this spot. Primetime game, Houston needs it. They're at home, all of that. But the thing that we have marveled at with Detroit's offense has been that Jared Goff is not throwing any incompletions, right? They've got more touchdowns than incompletions as a team the last six weeks. We've really Chris. never seen – anything like this before Houston's pass defense I think has been really overlooked by certainly us mm -hmm. as a show and maybe in the national discourse <clears throat> their defensive ranks against the pass third in yards allowed the best completion percentage allowed since the 2019 Patriots they're getting to the quarterback they're bringing the quarterback down so that is a fantastic matchup in this game and Jamison Williams is back for the Lions so the idea of this historically efficient Lions pass offense against this really top-notch Texans pass defense at home. I think that's the thing that maybe is surprising people of why people think Houston can be this competitive. Yeah, it's weird because you went into the season saying, boy, they loaded up at wide receiver. They got more depth than anybody they when they added digs, right? Uh, and I know yesterday you uh, you had the Stroud uh, Nico combination as your best wide receiver quarterback duo. I think you had yesterday on first things first, right? Mm -hmm. Which is you know just bad poop crazy, but that's a story for another day. Oh, here we go. Yeah, like the bad news here we for, go. is the Houston the Houston has lost to the Jets. Like let's keep this real for a second, right? They did. And I know Nico hasn't practiced this week. There is some history there. Dalton Schultz did miss a few days of practice earlier this year and played on a Sunday, so mm -hmm. he's not completely ruled out. But the Texans haven't been great all year, to be fair. You look who they beat. They beat, you know, a bad cold team, week two of a rookie quarterback. The Jaguars stink. Great win against the Bills. You know, that is their, their signature win. Yep. Beating New England, big deal. Green Bay, you know, throttled them. And the New York Jets, you know, uh, beat them as well. So this is a major step up in class for the Houston Texans. You're right. The building's not special. It's not going to be, like, overwhelming for Detroit to be there. And C.J. Stroud's come back down to earth. They don't run the ball effectively anymore. Mixon gets hurt. Nico's out. They're not a great team right now. Here's the thing, and you talk about C.J. Stroud and some of the struggles they've had in the passing game. Yeah. And so I'm going to educate you on football really quick because we have Greg here, okay? So when you're running a progression offense, right, you're throwing the football, you hit that fifth step in your pro progression, so it's one, two, three, four, five, you're ready to throw. Mm -hmm. You disrupt that first route. Guess what happens? You have to step up, right? So you go pop up and you come up into the pocket. Sure. Well, they're giving up more oh inside God. pressure than anybody in football. So as you climb the pocket to get to the second progression and that pressure compacts you, guess what? All of a sudden, you can't see it. All of a sudden, you're under pressure. You're under duress. And so the timing of this offense is completely off. Their timing and their inability to protect from guard, center, guard has really caused a problem in this in this passing offense. And then without the big-time weapon in Nico Collins, who's the over-the-top guy, right. so you run a five-step drop like an all-go, there is no hitch in that. Da -da -da -da, boom, throw it deep and let him go. So there's th this offense is struggling because they can't protect their yeah, quarterback. Yeah, so then let's You're answer that question. I'm, su I'm surprised the Lions only favored by three and a half. I am surprised, yeah. but to your point, and that's why Nico Collins is such a huge acquisition or, or su such a huge missing piece of this offense because – and, and when, when you drop back and you're a quarterback like C.J. Stroud and you've had the success, you know he's going to win. And if he is not open, he still has a big enough frame to where you can put it on him and he can make contested catches. But for me, the reason why I'm surprised by this spread is because, to your point, they haven't been playing really well. Right. But even defensively, you put up those numbers, will Will Anderson Jr. be able to do what he's done is he gonna play like we saw him get hurt yep, he was labored one. last week against the Jets he didn't look the same when he came back on the field and so you look at those sacks you look at those pressures that that changes with him not being on the field no question. or with him not being at full strength so it'll be interesting to see what he looks like but this Lions team 
I'm shocked at this spread, to be honest. Yeah, one last thing for me in this, and, and I'm glad you guys put the stats back up. Yeah, you do have to take account of what quarterbacks and which quarterbacks they have played against. I and mean, look, you don't pick who's on your schedule. We get all that. Right, they played Aaron Rodgers. Just go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Just go ahead and beat all the teams you can beat. But it ain't like a who's who of quarterbacks, right? And like, no put question. Up, put, up, put up their schedule again just real quick so we can make the point, you know, drive it home. Like, oh, great, you beat Anthony Richardson. Well, he's not a very good quarterback, right? Right. Josh Allen would be the you best. You beat a early rookie Caleb. Caleb Williams. You beat Trevor Lawrence, and the Jaguars were winless, right? You beat, I guess it was Jacoby Prissett in week six. Like, you haven't beaten a good quarterback. Not one. No doubt about it. No, I, You're going up against a guy who's playing as good as anybody. This is going to be a well, whitewash. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. I, I, I still am skeptical of the Lions defense without Hutchison. Yeah, the Lions I'm still, defense I'm still skeptical. They're not, they're not, they give up points too. We've yes. seen them right. give up a lot of yes. points, but they're, they're, they hang their hat on the offensive side of the ball where they're going to beat you up and they're going to score more than you score. Yeah. All right. Somebody on this set has 2020 vision when it comes to the National Football Thank League. Thank you. You know who that is? No, it. it's not you, oh. and it's not you, and it's not me. Is it Graphic it, Man? No, it is Graphic, graphic man. man. Graphic <laughs> Man has 2020 vision, <laughs> and it is time for Parkins Picks. <laughs> it is Graphic Man. <laughs> that is exactly who it is, Greg. Guys, as always, I'm seeing the NFL very clearly. Would have been another winning week. What? Would have been eight out of nine winning weeks if not for Nick if Sirianni it, somehow <laughs> not covering seven and a half when they were up. By 22-0, and unfortunately, Nick was on the other side of that one. So 18-10 and 10 on the season, 3-2, and two, heads up against Nick Wright of First Things First. To Week 10, and we go to Commanders and Steelers. We will take Pittsburgh plus three in this spot. Few reasons. Pittsburgh coming off a bye, and Jaden Daniels hasn't played a defense as good as this. We can look at the Commanders' opponents in terms of points per game allowed. Everybody middle of the pack or at the absolute bottom. The only one that was in the top five was the Bears. Should have lost the game. Steelers, by far the best defense he's ever faced. Mike Tomlin is an absolute menace to rookie quarterbacks and coming off a bye. So I think in this spot, what is the number? He's 25 and six against rookie quarterbacks and 13 and four. I'll be happy to take three points for the rested Pittsburgh Steelers in this game. Second game, we go back to betting on a favorite. We go back to betting on who I think is the second best player in the NFL. I'm opposite Craig in this spot. Bills minus three and a half against the Colts. Colts rush defense is terrible. What have we seen that the Bills are willing to do this year with Cook and with Allen? Run the ball. They've got the fifth most rushing touchdowns in the league. Indianapolis can't stop anybody on the ground. Plus Josh Allen doing what he's doing, not turning the ball over. He's got an interception in each of the last two games, but those are his only two. I think the Bills win that game by a touchdown or more. And then finally, I feel like I've had this spread circle for a week. Philly minus seven. Again, I don't know how Nick Sirianni didn't cover last week, but with Jalen Hurts not turning the ball over, their offense is a juggernaut, and this is very simple. I honestly don't think Jalen Hurts needs to pass the ball in order for them to win this game. Philly's offense running the ball is incredible. Dallas can't stop anyone, and everyone's going to talk about Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush, he won four straight games. Their defense allowed 13 points per game in those four wins. This is a very different Cowboys defense that Cooper Rush is going to be uh, have behind him. So I think Philly wins big, Buffalo wins by a touchdown or more, and I got the Steelers as an upset pick, so I'll gladly take the three. So let's go backwards. I think we're on lockstep. The Dallas Cowboys are a bad team, and all the strengths of Philly match up against their weaknesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we right. can go yeah. past that one. All right. I'm with you. That spread could be 15, and I'd probably take the Eagles over the Dallas Cowboys. Then let's, let's skip the Bills game for a second. Let's go to the first game, Washington-Pittsburgh, the battle of quarterbacks, young stud, KG old veteran. We've already spoken about how we think this will be an interesting game for Jaden. I'm with you because of the Steeler defense. Love the pick. I'm with Pittsburgh as well. What about you, Greg? Uh, you know what? I actually like the commanders in this spot. I You're think allowed that, to be wrong. I think that they're going to try to get the ball out of Jaden Daniels' hands quick and early so to eliminate that pass rush and to get him comfortable and acclimated right away. And then we'll see the, the resilience that he's yeah. played with all season. Yeah, he's wrong. I'm going with Pittsburgh. There you go. So, my, just real quick, my issue is I, we were all sitting here an hour ago when I told you for my weekend watch. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, The yeah, weekend yeah. watch I know, was went... three teams under 500 are going to win outright. The Jets over the Cardinals, the Giants over the Panthers, and what was that last one again, Greg? I, I don't oh, know. you weren't here. It Great. Was, no. It was the Colts over the Oh, yeah. It was the Colts over the Bills. So, we're opposite this week, too. 
Hey there, thank you so much for watching Breakfast Ball. You know, you can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from our show. And hey, while you're at it, make sure to check out all the amazing content from all the other shows also right here on FS1.